Like I have books to write and I have stories to tell and I have things to share. And so I'm not doing it. And I'm like, well, that's part of the reason why I think we're having this conversation. Cause it's like, well, why aren't you doing it? And, and what's your bullshit? Like, why are you putting this off? And, um, I think it kind of comes down a little bit to when we're talking about nurturing, you can build discipline and you can develop a practice and you can do things and even practice and discipline can become comfortable because it's really, it's comfortable for me to right now. Mm -hmm. And the challenge for me is to plant something specific and to grow something specific and to do something that maybe I haven't done before. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte, exploring the challenges of the creative call so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. Well, you know, on this show, we like to talk about creativity being creative. It's it's way of the artist, right? And, you know, a lot of our conversations and, and a lot of the, the subjects that we take on have a lot to do with the shit that gets in the way. What gets in the way of us being creative or what prevents us from our fullest creative power, for, so to speak. I don't really like how I said that, but that's fine. But what, what gets in the way of of that full expression, I guess, from coming through. And I think that the conversation we're having here today is, is really directly dealing with that very specific problem, which is a problem that I think most creatives and artists deal with, if not on a day to day basis, they have experienced it at certain points in their lives and career where there's this thing that you you really want to be doing and you're not doing it. You know, like when, when there's all of this creativity in this or this art or wh whatever the hell that thing is, maybe it's building an app or it can, it doesn't necessarily have to be an art related thing specifically, but what, what is this thing that, that you keep telling yourself that you want to do and that is important to you that you might even be saying it is the most important thing to you, but yet you're not doing it right. And there, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, there's when it comes to doing things that we really care about, that is usually a big part of why it sometimes there's all these obstacles and, and struggles that come with it. It's because it means so much to us, which is something that I think we'll discuss. But also I think that, and I'll hand it over to you in just a second here, Brandon. But to me, in sort of our pre-talk before we started recording, what was really coming to my mind is you have to decide that it's really important to you. you know, and, and what that means is that it's not just something you're telling yourself is important because it's like, what is, what is actually manifesting itself into something, right? What, what's is if this thing is so important to you, then it needs to actually start manifesting in some regard. And if it's not, well, then you have to, then, then in my mind, you haven't really decided that it's really that important to you. And, and it can be a really tough thing just to get through the mental barriers from really deciding, because if you're not doing it, then that question of, is this actually really important? It can either tell you that actually it doesn't mean as much to you as you thought it did. Or if you're looking at your life and you're seeing that nothing that you're doing in your day-to-day -day life is in service to that thing, then you got to take that as a wake-up call, right? And, and start finding your way to building that into your life. So that's what I'm starting with. Brandon, take it away. Well, it's interesting as you were talking, I was thinking about this just because you like something might be important to you, but if you're not giving it attention and you're not putting action towards it, then you're telling, I don't know, yourself, the world, the universe, everything you're saying that it's not important. And, you know, words are cheap. I think it's really an important thing to, 
to keep in mind, you know, that basically you can talk all day about how you care about something and how you love something and how important it is. But if you don't give it attention, if you don't like actually do anything towards doing it, then it doesn't really matter. And use this word manifesting. And I think, you know, this is an interesting word because it got kind of corrupted like 20 years ago where people looked at the word manifesting like, oh, if I just think about it and feel it, it'll happen. And and there is some truth to that. There, It's not entirely false, but it's, it's incomplete. Because I do think that's important. I do think you should feel it. I do think vision is helpful. I think getting clear, clear in your mind and getting a sense for it and, and all of that. But manifesting happens often in giving something constant attention and action and nurturing it and nurturing it and nurturing it. And then eventually you begin to see it blossom. And the blossoming seems like this manifesting of things that just kind of appeared out of nowhere. And I think this is where a lot of people go wrong. I think what they they think is that, oh, if I just think about it and feel it and put up a vision board or something, that it'll happen. What I've found is that for myself, at least, I've used vision boards. I actually think they're great. I think they're really useful. Some people think they're silly. I like, I have a, a kind of a vision board that I use right now where I look at it every day and I just imagine it coming to life and I imagine it becoming a thing. And I do think it helps me to do a lot of things. It helps coordinate my action in a lot of ways and my attention in a lot of ways towards living the life I want to live and, and having that lifestyle be actuated. But I think without action and without nurturing it and putting attention towards making it happen, the, the, the whole thing becomes disconnected. And I, I think we have a lot of what I, I just call it like bullshit. And I think it's like we have this bullshit, this story, this thing that gets in the way. What I'm kind of interested in discussing in this is how I personally create bullshit that gets in the way of me doing what I really know I want to do and I do care about. Um, and it's, it's, I can see it happening. Sometimes I find it hard to stop myself from getting in my own way. And sometimes I find it hard to not let the emotion of regular life get in the way. I think that's where I, I'm finding, um, And I'm sure a lot of people can relate. It's just like stressors and worries and fears and responsibilities. And I'm like, well, I got to do this and I have to do that. And if I don't do this, you know, and then all of a sudden I've done all these things and now I have nothing left for myself. And, and, and sometimes, and one other thing that's happening, which I noticed that's occurring in my own life is that it's like, I'm not actually as busy as I make believe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh i'd love to explore that and figure out where, where all that's coming from anyway I'll let me pass it on to you yeah 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 i think that definitely there are things as you said we can make ourselves busy with all kinds of things that aren't aren't necessarily like they're they're not not important but they're not the thing right like it's it's Because we're talking about deciding what's important in the biggest, in the biggest sense of that. Like, what is your life about, right? What are you, what are you oriented towards? What are you, what is the, the calling of, of your life? Like, these are the things that are important. And it's like, what are, and what are the things that come out of that, right? Because it's, it's. I mean, as an artist, there can be all of these things that that come. A painter is going to make many paintings, right? But what is that really all about, right? And so it's it's that thing that makes all of the painting necessary, right? And then, I mean, I guess there's a few decisions there because then you have to decide is like, okay, but then painting the thing to be in service of that is important as well, but we can make all sorts of other things which aren't in service to that thing necessarily. And we can make those things the important thing. Oh, I've got to do this right now. I've got to, 
you know, oh, I've got to run to the bank or I've got to go and get some groceries and or I've got to do the dishes. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure you do have to do all of those things. And, and those things will have to happen. You know, you having a, a clean home and food to eat and all of that stuff is that's important. Right. But we often will just slot those things in front of the real thing, the real thing that's nagging at us. And there's like, you're not doing this thing that you say that's important to you. And, and the wear that that puts on you as well can't be understated, but there's, there has to be a point in which, in which you acknowledge and, and your life starts to actually reflect that this thing does have that importance, right? And whoa, whoa, Charles. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Got good old Charlesburg. Yeah. Running around in the studio. You all right, bud? Yeah, he seems fine. <laughs> I'm I'm just going to I'm going to I'm going to reset for a second on on a bit of a different track because there was something that you had said that sparked something for me as well. And I can't remember exactly what it was, but you you pointed something out that made me think like oh yeah like cre- creativity and creation is something that is grown right it's something that you grow you nurture that was the word that you used you're talking about nurturing you got to nurture this thing that you say that is important it doesn't happen on its own there's a participation that you you that you have to to involve yourself with and i think that also with creativity is that like there is this this aspect of it stephen pressfield talks about this probably both directly and indirectly but this that participation of you showing up to do this thing is like is like your offering to creativity right it's like saying okay i'm showing up I'm showing up, I'm showing up for this thing to happen, right? And when you do that, it's like, it's like sort of appeasing the, the creativity gods, right? It's just like, okay, you're not sitting there twiddling your thumbs, just thinking about the thing you're, you're here and you're showing up. So then creativity kind of shows up for you as well. But you said, uh, yeah, you said nurture and it just made me think like, oh yeah, creativity is something that has grown, right? Like it's, it's something that you tend to like, uh, like a plant that you're you've you've seeded it and you've got to water it and make sure it gets sun you've got to care for this thing you got to look after it in order for it to actually flourish and grow but it's interesting because we think of i think a lot of us think of creativity and creation as this thing that just goes bah like it just it just appears and it's suddenly there and manifested right <laughs> which it's funny that I use the word because like I, I, I'm a little bit icked out by the word manifest as well because I hear it so often used and that's a whole other thing. But that's it. That process does have those moments. It has a bunch of those little moments built into it where suddenly it's like, oh, this thing appears and this thing appears, right? Like suddenly there's a little sprout shooting up in the in the soil, mm-hmm. right? And he goes like, oh, look at that. Boom, right? But you still got to keep caring for it. And then suddenly it's like, oh, wow, look, it just shot out another, you know, like you you suddenly look at it and you're like, whoa, this thing's just grown crazy. And there's a little leaf shooting out here all of a sudden. And now there's this bloom or this whatever it is. But like there's, that's through a process of nurturing, mm-hmm. right? Creativity is grown, right? It's grown. It doesn't just, it doesn't just happen. It, it takes that care and that nurturing, as you said, in order for it to happen and I think that that's you know that is part of that decision because I guess it's taking responsibility for it Mm -hmm. you know taking responsibility for that thing that you say is important to you because unless you're you're actually doing something for it actively participating right Yeah. Like unless you're, unless you're doing that, like it's, yeah, 
Yeah. I don't know if I've quite closed out my thought there, but <laughs> that's what I got. Well, you know, you, you just keep thinking about it and, and it, things happen, right? You know, I, I, do, I do think that there's an element of nurture, which as artists, we need to learn to appreciate nurturing things. And not because necessarily because we get to see the results of our nurturing, but because the nurturing is something that we believe in and we think is good. And um, I think the results tend to come, but there's a, I forget what plant it is or tree, but you like plant it and for like five years or something, like you water it and like nothing happens. And then all of a sudden it just, it grows, but it's all, yeah. it's all happening under the surface. Right. And, you know, there's a certain amount of nurturing where we don't get results and we're not going to get results right away. And that those results aren't going to come for a very long time. And that's really hard. I, I find that to be very challenging because you have to have a lot of faith that what you're doing is going to, you know, is going to produce something. And you also, you know, there's also a practice in detachment. I think sometimes when we create something, we can come to the point where we're like, ah, you know, nothing's ever going to happen with this. This is, this is going nowhere. And, you know, that can, can de derail an entire project that you're working on or whatever else. So there's a certain amount of, you need to do something simply because you believe in doing it, you enjoy doing it. And, you know, you're not just nurturing the thing you're building, you're nurturing yourself. Mm -hmm. So something that I've been, that's been interesting for me now is like, I've, uh, I got a lot of screenplay ideas and a lot of books. I've written a lot of screenplays, but I've got a lot of stuff that's, you know, been shelved and it's just sitting there and it's just, it's actually just collecting because new ideas keep coming in and, you know, I'm like, oh, I'd be good. I should pursue that. And it's like, oh, I don't got time. I got to go do this. I got to go do that. Right. And I have, um, I actually have several books outlined and ready to go. And some of them even partially written. And I just never really kind of finished them, you know? And, um, I use, uh, this app Grammarly and what it does is I write every day. And so it gives me my feedback every week or so and tells me how I'm doing. And on an average, I write between 20,000 to 100,000 words a week on average. And over the course of a year, it's like, oh, you're, you've written 3.5 million words this year. And it's like 3.5 million. And I'm not even publishing a book. Like, what am I doing? Like, what is going on here? And so like, I'm definitely nurturing my ability to write and my ability to kind of communicate with words and figure that stuff out. But there comes a point where it's like, okay, like, you know, you know, the, the, you are building something here, but at a certain point, I think you have to look at your garden that you're creating and you need to plant something specific. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like what I've kind of come to a point now where it's like, okay, man, like, what are you going to, what are you going to, like, you built this great garden, you've nurtured it, it's flourishing, you know, you're, you're, you have discipline with writing. I've written, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying like, like how discipline can sometimes not even be enough. But like I've written for 4,100 and some, some odd days now. And it's like, that's like over 11 years of writing every single day, never missed a day. And I'm obviously putting down millions of words in a year. And, you know, and then it's like, there was a certain point for me as a writer where it wasn't about showing anybody anything. It was simply, I'm writing for me. This is for me to work out my thoughts, to do my thing. This is my time. And now I've kind of come to a point where I've like built that solidness in myself, I suppose. And it's like, well, what do you, now that you've done this, do you want to do anything with it? And like, if I'm honest with myself, I'm like, yeah, I do. Like I have books to write and I have stories to tell and I have things to share. And so I'm not doing it. And I'm like, well, that's part of the reason why I think we're having this conversation. Cause it's like, well, why aren't you doing it? And, and what's your bullshit? Like, why are you putting this off? And, um, I think it kind of comes down a little bit to when we're talking about nurturing, you can build discipline and you can develop a practice and you can do things and even practice and discipline can become comfortable. 
Because it's really, it's comfortable for me to write now. Mm -hmm. And the challenge for me is to plant something specific and to grow something specific and to do something that maybe I haven't done before. Um, And I'll just, before I pass it on to you, there's one thing I wanted to share. So I have this, I have a, a bunch of different plants that I'm growing right now. And it's, you know, it's a thing that I, and plants and trees and things that I want to nurture that I, it's just something I, I, I care to do. And I have this uh, spider plant and I had it in my kitchen. I have a big window there and it was hanging over the edge and it just was like, it was wilting. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, like this, this thing, this one plant is not like, it doesn't like it here. So I was like, okay, and I, and I'm like, maybe, maybe I'll give it a little bit of time. I gave it a little bit of time. It was only getting worse. And I'm like, okay, like this is not working. I got to move this thing. So I moved it outside and I, I put it on my table out there and it gets the the sun and it gets, it's kind of in the spot where it gets a bit of sprinkle of water when it rains. And if I it needs a little extra, I can give it it. And the thing's blossoming and it's flourishing and it's growing. And this was a talk we did have before. It's not the thing I want to focus on, but I do think it's relevant. We had a talk back in the day about the conditions for success, the conditions for creativity. And I do think that there's a certain amount of this conversation, which is we do need to create the conditions for things to grow and flourish. But what I'm more interested in today is about once you create those conditions, you know, are you putting attention on that thing that you're trying to grow? Because you can look at like the, the interesting thing about, I don't really have a green thumb, but the thing about interesting that's interesting about growing plants or a garden is that every little thing needs something different. And I find creativity is like that, mm-hmm. you know, like not everything is going to need the same like sunlight or the same amount of water or whatever. Like if you're growing a cactus or you sometimes things like the shade a little bit more, you know, Mm -hmm. and sometimes things like direct sunlight and some things like, you know, uh, 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 they want it like they're they're plants that grow underneath like palm trees and, and big trees and they, they die under direct sunlight, but they need sun, but they, they need it deflected and they need it diffused and so if you look at yourself like an artist and you look at your projects like an artist it's about figuring out I think in some what do you need for this to work and if that's in place and you're not and then you're not actually nurturing it anymore like if you've actually created the conditions because this is where what's happened for me I've created the conditions for success but I've noticed that there is a lack of pursuit on actually growing the things I want to grow now that the conditions have been set up. And so it's interesting to me. It's just like, how does that happen? Like, where does the, and where does life and my emotions and my fears and all my bullshit, like, where does it pull me away? Because, because I look at myself right now and I go, Brandon, you write, you write three and a half million words a year. And if you're not publishing a book every year, then I think there's a problem. (laughs) I mean, it, 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 it's, there's not a problem if you don't want to, but you know you want to. Like, I, I've checked in myself. I know I want to. So then it goes, well, why aren't you doing it? And I think it's a combination of two things, and I'll pass it on to you. One is life gets in the way. I get stressed. I get worried. I, I, I feel I have responsibilities. I got to take care of those first. And so I don't put work into my book that I should be writing or want to be writing. And then secondly, I think there's always the, well, if I go and do this and like, you know, it's not good or it doesn't work or something like that. I think that's always at play for everybody creatively. And I think the only way to face that is to do it. And so, you know, that, but I do think that that comes in to some degree, you know, Mm -hmm. like I look at my writing and it's, yeah, I write three and a half million words a year and that sounds impressive, but also it's like, then it's like, well, how good is my writing? (laughs) I mean, is it good? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the only test is to put it out there and start to share it and get it reviewed And, um, you know, and, and these are, these, this is a real challenge for us as artists, right? Yeah. I mean, like in terms of just your own personal anecdote here to this, you know, you're used to writing a certain thing, right? And that's, that's the difference is you're used to writing a, a very certain kind of thing every day. And these other things 
that you want to be writing are a different kind of thing. They're a different kind of writing for a different purpose, for a different whatever. And, you know, part of, I think, deciding that something is is really important to you is also acknowledging that there's value in what you have to share as well. And I think that that's something that we can become disconnected from as well as we, we stop seeing what we have as valuable or potentially valuable to somebody else. Right. And sometimes it's not an easy thing to do, or or we might not even totally understand how something is valuable. And, and there's almost a wisdom to that in a sense, because sometimes things that you don't even think twice about someone will find to be so life-changing or something will stick out to somebody that, that you didn't even imagine as being something important or relevant or whatever it's and it's because people are coming from wherever they're at right and and a lot of the wisdoms that we walk around with i mean they're wisdoms because not because we necessarily think about them anymore but because we actually we just that's it's become a part of us right and and it's very often the things that we try and share very often intentionally as wisdoms that are the things that we're not even totally that we haven't totally squared up with ourselves yet. You know, we're kind of wrestling with these things. I think it's part of why we do this podcast. And to talk about something else you were saying, you brought in the word bullshit. You know, you said, what is the bullshit that we have around ourselves that, that gets in the way? And I think that in many ways, it might just be as simple as that. Like it isn't, but in many ways it is as simple as that. And just being able to recognize that whatever the stuff is that's getting in the way of doing that thing, we'll just recognize that it's bullshit, right? Instead of having to be like, okay, but why is it bullshit? Where, like, how is it bullshit? What is it bullshit? (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's, it's, you could, I mean, maybe there's some utility to that investigation but it might also be enough just to recognize that look it's just bullshit it's just bullshit and don't get me wrong i'm i'm not trying to like i i this is funny i feel like like we're in a bit of a role reversal <laughs> for how for for how these podcasts usually go i'm kind of the person who's like who's charging in on this one with with certain things but i think that let me collect my thoughts. Bullshit. We're talking about bullshit. And the bullshit that we tell ourselves and the bullshit that gets in the way. Knowing that it's bullshit might be enough. You don't need to understand the bullshit. You don't need to understand, <laughs> you don't need to understand the bullshit. Yeah, I think that... Ah, oh, son of a bitch, Brandon. <laughs> son of a bitch. I don't even know how I lost. This is one of those ones where I was like, I didn't even think I, I could lose this one. But then I was like, no, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And then and then it disappeared on me. It disappeared. Okay, let me rescue you for a second. See if it comes back. I think you're right. I think that, you know, I think that we don't always have to understand the bullshit. I think this is a relief. Recognize that it's bullshit and then go, okay, how do I stop the bullshit? I, I think that's such a simplistic and uh, it's ut- utilitarian in the sense that you could just do it. Like, let's just, okay, it's bullshit. Like, like okay, let's stop doing that. And like, I'll, I'll, like, I don't need to necessarily understand every in and out as to why I do that. Mm-hmm. It just is what it is. It's, and it's, I know that I'm letting things that aren't important be more important than what's really important. And this is not good. Yeah. I do. I, I did remember what I was going to say. I was also just to add to to that. I'm thinking it's like, you know, it would be almost useful to just have something wherever you, you do your work or your creative, you know, wherever you do your thing, just have have something up there that says, like, remember, it's bullshit, right? Like, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It just doesn't it doesn't matter. It's just it's bullshit. And there's something relieving about that. But the thing I was, the, the other thing I was just trying to to add some nuance into this thing is, look, I understand that like life does have things that it asks of us and we have responsibilities and, and things. And I'm not trying to be, 
you know, I'm not trying to be discompassionate towards that thing. I get that those things exist and, and trying to find, to find time to do those things can often be a challenge, but Again, it still does come down to, but are you doing the thing that you say is important, right? And making that, when you make the decision that it really truly is, and that your life needs to start reflecting that in a real tangible way, you will find space in order to do it, right? Like I know for myself, like I'm, I'm a, a parent and I'm looking after my little kid for, you know, a good chunk of the week. And, and then on top of doing other work and just upkeeping a, a house and things like that, it's hard to find time. But I know that there are things that, that I say that are important to me and just even like little things like reading more. Right. And I'm not doing it. You know, it's like, okay, it's like, do I really not have time to read? It's like, well, no, that's not exactly true because when my little guy does go down in the evening, I could do it then instead of sitting on the couch watching Netflix, you know, like that. It's like, it's like, oh yeah, there's, I could somewhere in there do that. So it's, even though there, there's not much time throughout the rest of the day, it's not like I can't find spots. And sometimes, yes, you do need to rest and sometimes you do you like you just your capacity is completely gone although i think that there's something some very interesting things can come out of you when you've got nothing in the tank mm. you know in fact my old acting teacher larry he used to tell this anecdote about this famous ballet dancer like this russian ballet dancer or something who used to kind of like exert himself to a point of exhaustion before a performance. And people would be like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you? And he said something like, because when I step out there, I want to have nothing left to hang on to. Mm. Right. Like it's like just complete sort of just trying to annihilate all of your controls and all of your, I, in a way, it's like it, annihilating a lot of the bullshit, right? That can often creep in when you have energy. And when you don't have energy sometimes, or you don't feel like you have that energy, often it actually clears the most open channel for something just real and honest and true to come out, mm. right? So it's bullshit, man. <laughs> bullshit. Like it's, it's, it's just recognize that it's bullshit. And, and yes, you have real things going on, but also you've got to be honest about the, the components that are bullshit. You know, something that came up for me while you're talking, you're saying, yeah, we need our rest. And before you even said that, I was thinking, yeah, energy, like energy is such a big part of what makes a lot of things seem or feel doable. And I think negotiating our relationship with energy is, is very important. And it's like, you know, uh, being tired, right. Is a real, it's, it's a real thing. I mean, you, you're tired and you don't feel like it. And I think with art, there is a certain amount of artists tend to create because they like it and it feels good and they want to do it. But I do think there's a certain point if you hang around in your creative long enough where it just becomes work and it becomes difficult and there are certain elements of it that become hard and that's when you have to push through and have the discipline and the kind of decision to be like, I'm going to do this regardless of how I feel. And actually, I found that in at least in screenwriting, when I would... I would just, I was very disciplined with screenwriting in my younger years. And what I would do is I would just be like, Hey, well, you know, I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm whatever's going on. I'm going to write anyway. And that emotion would inform the writing and it would help. And I'd be like, Oh, I'm so glad I wrote afterwards, but getting going was always a bitch. Mm -hmm. It was always just such a pain in the ass. And it's just like, you know, and I have all this bullshit that would try and talk me out of it. And, um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm going, you know, how much of my life, you know, just to go like, what is the bullshit? How much of my life am I letting being run by how I feel? And I know from a point of wisdom that if you make decisions based on how you feel, you'll probably end up with lackluster results and you will find that you underperform and a lot of your dreams and goals and things like that escape you. I do think feeling is important, but I think that letting feeling inform our decisions is a bad thing. I heard this talk the other day and, um, someone was giving kind of feedback on someone else's talk and the person was saying well you know it is what it is and da, 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 and they were kind of saying all this type of stuff and the person was like yeah it is what it is to the degree that you're being unconscious about it so for example and they use this reference they said look your base desires i want to eat ice cream all day i want to sleep all day i want to watch tv all day i want to do what feels good all day that is what it is what you do control is deciding not to eat ice cream all day, deciding not to sleep all day. Mm -hmm. That's where things aren't what they are. Like they, they, yes, you have feeling desires that are always going to want to be satiated and feel good. You're going to have that all the time. And people who tend to give into that all the time have very lackluster lives that they end up overweight. They end up not pursuing their dreams. They end up having all the negative consequences of life because they continually give into their base desires and they go with the flow of their very like very um like almost archaic like kind of rudimentary feelings you need to have the mind and you need to rise above that and you need to go you know what if i eat ice cream all day as good as it tastes and as much as i like doing it it's gonna have some negative results yeah. And most of us do this to some degree, like, you know, but some of us, we like, we don't, we don't like eat junk food all day because it actually just doesn't feel good. And that's what stops us. That's not good. You should not eat it because you're looking at it going, wait a minute, I have something that I'm trying to serve other than just feeling good in this moment. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking about my bullshit and where, where, I mean, I'm sure it works the same way for everybody to some degree. It's just like, at the end of the day, what's going on? I want to feel good. But there's a point where it doesn't feel good. And, but I'm not recognizing it until after the fact. Mm -hmm. In the moment, I just want to feel good. And so, um, you know, and I'm talking, go back to energy it's like, I'm tired. I don't really feel like doing it right now. It's like, oh, you know, I'll wait till I feel a little more energy. Let me have a nap. Let me let me eat, eat this or watch this show or do something. I'll relax. I'll put myself at ease and then I'll come back and do it. And then I don't. And it's bullshit because it's, it's a trick. It's like I convince myself to say procrastinate and put it off. And um, yeah, I'm just becoming like more aware of how I do it. Because I think there's a certain amount of wisdom you can have it and you can be like, I know this is good and not good and whatever. But then the actual action of doing it, living it, experiencing it, you know, these are other things. And I think that's what this kind of talk is a, is a bit about. It's like recognizing that it doesn't feel good right now in this moment, but it will feel good later. And that's why I need to do the right thing now and not the satiate thing today or whatever. Well, you know, and a big part of that thing that is, what's just occurring to me now, and this is I mean, very interesting and a little bit profound for me, <laughs> just in this moment, is that, you know, that whole thing of, of like temporary pain, long-term gain, kind of a thing you know you're going to be happier in the long term and it's like yeah 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 but it's you know I've often it can be for myself it can be hard to wrap your head around and the thing about that long term gain is that it's actually it's actually about building it's about building a stronger relationship with yourself and with life. 
That's the gain, right? You're building an intimacy with life when you choose to do the things that are really important. Mm -hmm. When you actually start doing that thing, right? Because, yeah, those temporary, satiating those those temporary desires, yeah, as you said, feels good in the moment. But the moment you're done eating that ice cream (laughs) or whatever it is, there's just an emptiness, And when you really are doing things for your passion, for the thing that calls you, for the thing that you know deep down is really important to you, it is uncomfortable only because it's uncomfortable to that base level of you. The real, that's not the real you, right? The real you is that, deep part of you and i mean just throw out the whole to me i I just want to say throw out the whole idea of that long-term gain thing so don't even think about it in that context this is about you building a relationship with yourself with your true self and with and with life itself on a deeper level that's that's why you do the thing That's why you put off the thing is you're throwing out the superficial for something that's actually fucking real. Mm. And that's, I think, maybe one of the reasons why we don't do it is because there's something scary about that. There's something that's really scary about that. There's we're we're afraid of what we might find there and what that might change, what that might disrupt. Yeah. Yeah. And one last thing I'll say about this is just a, on a, a purely practical element of getting going, because this is, that's always the hardest thing. And, but I think that the hardest thing about getting going is, is typically we're just trying to do too much in that get going process, right? We, it's like, it's like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I got to sit down, I've got to have hours you know, I've got to get, try and block off however many hours to do this thing. And it's just like, no, 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 fuck that. Don't, don't even like, that's way too ambitious, right? Can you do five minutes today? Mm-hmm. Start with something that's so stupidly, embarrassingly simple and easy to do, right? That it's just like, give yourself a parameter that gives you absolutely zero excuse to not do it and it's like okay like and set a timer put it on your phone set in time five minutes and start writing that book right like actually start putting some words down or putting some paint to canvas whatever the fuck it is just do it for five minutes right and that's it it's like it's five minutes more than you would have done otherwise mm-hmm. and what you'll find is that the five minutes goes up and you're like, oh, okay, I'm done. And if you want, you can totally just fuck off from there and <laughs> and and do whatever the hell you want. But there's also a very good chance that you're going to hit that five minutes and you're going to go, oh, actually, I can I can keep going on this for a little bit longer. And you'll keep going for a little bit longer. Maybe you do 10 minutes and you'll and and you'll stop and be like, okay, I did 10 minutes today. Right. And I actually got like a couple of paragraphs written. Sweet. Right. That's, that's done. Then the next day you commit to five minutes again. Right. Like it's just, you gotta, you gotta make it so simple. You gotta hack yourself in this way. I mean, and, and for me, that's one of the simplest ways that I've learned to hack myself. I love simple. It's gotta be some sort of a a very simple process because otherwise you start complicating it. Like that's, I think another way in which we, in which we self-sabotage, right? Like it's, it's one of these little ways that keeps us from doing it. But yeah, coming back to that thing, just, you know, that, that realization of, of that thing that is important is, is about the real true thing that, that we are and that our life is about. And and that everything else, that, that bullshit, like that we, it's, it's all, it's all just superficial, right? It's not the real you. 
So I think you're, I think you're right about that. I think going from neutral to first gear is one of the hardest things to do. We've talked about that in the podcast before. I think that's an important thing to recognize that you need to hack yourself into simply just getting started. A lot of the time that'll solve most of your problems. Not to say that there won't be some other things that come up, but I have found that if I can just get myself going, that that tends to be true. Something that I want to discuss a little bit before we wrap this baby up is the whole idea that like life gets in the way in the sense of worry and fear and like pressures of doing what you feel you have to do versus what you want to do. So, you know, one of the challenges that I, you know, I face and I'm sure everybody faces to some degree at certain times in my life I face is this whole idea of like, well, I got to make sure I make enough money. I got to make sure I do this. I got to make sure I accomplish these things. And if I don't, there's this like impending doom coming, right? Like, um, it, you know, it's when you're in a place where you're, where you're just set, like financially you're set, everything's kind of taken care of, you know, things are just kind of in order. And, and I mean, that's optimal, right? Like that would be ideal. But for most of us, life isn't like that. And even for those of us who I think we get it all figured out, there's still stressors that come in. There's still things because what ends up happening is, you know, I, I find it kind of works like this. At first, you figure out how to take care of yourself. Then you figure out how to take care of yourself. And then you figure out how to take care of like either other people or other things. And as you accumulate and build and grow and evolve, you just end up taking on more responsibility because you expand your world and it becomes bigger. And there's more going on. There's more complexities. There's more to take care of. And I'm sure you know this. I mean, you have a wife and a kid. I mean, that in and of itself is I think the ultimate expression of extending yourself and having responsibilities that are beyond you. So when the, when those things put pressure on you, it becomes more and more diff more it becomes more and more difficult to carve out time for yourself and be like, "Hey, I need to do my creativity." And this is something I think we have to negotiate and I mean, I look at it and I go, "Well, you know, like I have goals that say are financially based and then I have goals that are creatively based. And what I find happens at least at this stage in my life is the financial goals always seem to get put in a priority position to my creative goals. And I've just noticed this. I've just, you know, it's just been something that's been kind of becoming more and more evident to me where it's like, wait a minute, is that really the most important thing? And then, but then I'm like, well, we'll do your creativity. And it's like, yeah, but you got to make sure you, you know, you, you do this and you do that because money, 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 money just starts to become this thing. And, um, you know, uh, in, in my journey, I've had a few times where like, I mean, look, I'll, I'll share a couple stories to give context. When I was a kid, my parents declared bankruptcy. We lost everything. I went from living in a mansion to living in a trailer park. There's been times in my life where I've had, I've had so much money. I didn't even know what to do with it all. And I'm traveling and flying around the world and doing all this shit. And then there's been moments where I couldn't even put the power on. And I've had that roller coaster experience. And as much as it's given context to my life and helped me to see both sides from wealth and poverty and everything in between, there is now this kind of, okay, I never want to let myself fall to that point again. Whereas when I was younger, I suppose in a certain, to a certain degree, I hadn't experienced certain things like of the ground falling through. So I'm finding in like this, this stage in my life, there's this kind of over, uh, emphasis on security and safety. It's like, yeah, yeah, you were in your twenties or your, you know, your thirties when that happened and you know, that sucked, but that's never going to happen again. You know, like, like we learn that lesson. And so there's a certain amount of attention that I put to just securing my life and to making sure everything's covered and safe. And what happens is it comes often at the cost of neglecting my artistic expression. And a lot of the things that I said I wanted to do 
and I recognize that I'm not living up to them. And so now I feel like I'm in the stage where, okay, we need to negotiate. We need to make a new negotiation here because what's happening is responsible Brandon is winning fucking full out. He's got things covered. He pays his fucking bills. He keeps his word. He does everything on time. He's fucking on the fucking ball when it comes to discipline and, and doing what he says he do. But as far as his artistic self, his child self, his, his inner self, whatever, he's totally fucking failing him. You know, and it's like, I'm not saying that th- it's not, I'm not saying that I, like I, it's only been a short period of time, but it's been enough for me to recognize, Hey, wait a minute. What's the point of all this responsible, you know, person living this way if he's just going to let down? It's like, I have to look at it this way. I don't have a kid, but if I did have a kid, I would want to make sure that they're fed, they're they're clothed, they're housed, all of this. But I would also want to make sure they get to play some sports and they get to be creative and they get to do all this other shit. And so I feel like if I look at myself as an adult and as a kid at the same time, I'm being the adult and I'm making sure I'm clothed, I'm making sure I'm housed, I'm making sure I'm fed, I'm making sure that I keep my word in with relationships, which I think are all important. And I don't want to not do that. But I'm really... It's coming at the cost of nurturing my play and creativity and expression and these things that actually really in a lot of ways you could say even matter more. But they, but I think this is a big part of what we talk about, Evan, is how art in our culture, because we're so industrial, financial based in just the way we live today, art often does get shoved to the side it becomes a secondary thing it's like i'll take care of it when i have the money i'll take care of it when this is done and i think we can all fall into this trap you know and like if you live in vancouver or british columbia i mean the cost of living here is fucking astronomical like we're one of the most expensive places to live in the world right now and you know the pressure to keep up and not i'm not even keeping up with the joneses just to to make sure that everything is good. Um, It just becomes, it becomes your focus. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want this. This isn't what I'm, this isn't how I want to live. So like, it's not like, it's interesting because I've struggled with money and just basic like living things, but I always had a very full artistic life. Now what I'm finding is I have a very full financial kind of like security and safety, but now my art and creativity are are not being nurtured. And it's like, man, I'm trying to find some balance between both of these and not let my bullshit get in the way because both can be met but I have a story going on and an emotional feeling about it and stuff that, that stopping me. And I'm sure people can relate to this. That's why I wanted to bring this up today. That's why I wanted to talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, I'm, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where to, I don't know where to jump off from that necessarily. Should we, should we, should we talk beer? Well, or do you, or do you, do you have some, something, because I don't know if I have anything, you know, I mean, a, I, anything I, to add to that okay. necessarily. Would you question? What, what are your, okay, this is before we do beer and we wrap this baby up. What's your insight on that? Like, I mean, like, I feel like for me, I don't have a kid and a wife. And so for me to have this bullshit is almost, I'm not, not comparing but it's just like, it's, it is real bullshit because like if I had a kid, like a real kid and I was taking care of him, it would make sense why I'd be like, oh man, I got to be responsible. I got to do all this stuff. But like, I'm just taking care of me right now. And it's like, okay, this is real bullshit because like, like other people have way more responsibility than I do, but I'm still caught in the same fucking trap that we all are. Okay. Well, okay. Maybe I do have something I can say, say to this, <laughs> to some effect what comes to my mind is that expression of wherever you go, there you are. Right. Because in talking about conditions and things like that, where, yeah. And before we started recording, 
we were talking a little bit about this idea of, oh, you know, in order to create, you got to feel, you have to feel safe and like things are taken care of and da, 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 da. And it's like, yeah, but at the same time, when things are really, sometimes when things are really comfortable and things are really secure there, we can get lazy too. You know, it doesn't necessarily, it, it isn't necessarily a condition or a conduit to your creativity thriving at all like there there's a whole flip side to how that can stop you from doing it doing your thing as well um and you have even less of an excuse and you know i know even you know becoming a parent there was an aspect of me that that i thought you know i think that having a kid is really going to help give me a sense of you know, like of, of direction and yada, yada, yada. And in some ways, yes, but in some ways I'm still dealing with the same bullshit that I had before. I just have less time to deal with my bullshit. And in some ways that's part of the clarity is just not having the time can sometimes be the thing that gives you clarity of, of things that are important. But the same stories and avoidance strategies are still in play. You know, like it's, it's, they're still, they're still there. It just kind of, everything becomes heightened and you're just hyper aware of, of this stuff because, because you don't have long gaps of time where you can sort of recover. It's like when you have, when you have moments to do stuff, those few moments that you have to actually do stuff, like you just become aware of like, what am I going to do with this time? Right. And am I going to do something that's important or am I going to, you know, go and do this thing or that thing? And Hey, look, sometimes I do. I just genuinely need rest. Like I actually need to just freaking put my head on a pillow and get some sleep. But at other times it's like, okay, this is my opportunity and I'm going to take it right? Because this is all I've got. So there's, there's, there's no perfect scenario conditions that are going to help you get past that bullshit because it's just, it's just still you. It's just still you and your stuff that you're carrying around with you always right which is why i i really do think you know and and i'm thinking i i am going to do this where i am going to write up somewhere you know just like remember it's bullshit right remember it's bullshit remember that that story or that thing that's going on that feeling that you're having that's making you hesitate that's making you not do this thing that you know is important to you just it's bullshit just remember it's bullshit right and use it as a fucking mantra (laughs) you know like it's bullshit right and 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 you're letting your 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 small superficial self win out over you right don't let that thing win out over you right so so yeah i mean and yeah wherever you go there you are and and so i think it's you know, this conversation and and part of, you know, like, I don't know what we're going to end up calling this episode, but, you know, I I had just jotted down here, you know, decide what is important as, as that jumping off point for this thing. And one of the things that I was excited about for this conversation is that I really felt a sense of immediacy about this subject, right? This, this real sense of, of, let's just cut through some stuff here. And it's interesting. Some of the stuff that we've talked about (laughs) in this has been almost thematic of that feeling, at least for me, which is that it's like, yeah, like we can, we can philosophize and, and discuss and, you know, come at this from all sorts of different angles. And it's, and I, it's not, that's not wasted time by any stretch of the imagination, but I come back to this at, coming to the end of this conversation being like, well, but yeah, it's, it's, 
whatever your story is, whatever your situation is, whatever is, is going on at the end of it, it's just, it's just you. And have you decided that this thing is important? And are you actually doing something for that thing that is important to you? Are you actually doing something for that thing? And everything else around it is just bullshit. All the reasons you're telling yourself that you can't do this or you don't have time to do this, it's bullshit, right? And it's weird for me to be, it, it does feel strange for me to be giving this sort of, this this kind of messaging because it's certainly not typically my MO, but I'm really, I'm, I'm really feeling this one in that way um, for this conversation that it's just like, look, this is, this is just, there's an immediacy to it, you know, and just as a making a decision is an immediate thing, right? Like as, as much thinking about something as you do in your life and making a decision, when it comes down to a decision, the decision is not made until you've just said, okay, boom, this is what we're doing, right? It still happens, boom, in the moment. And it's, and it's decisive, right? We make, we, we pick a clear direction and we're going with it, right? Because as we've also talked about many times before, is that there's no end to the amount of things that you can learn about something before you make that decision to proceed with something. It's, it's an infinite amount of information that you could take in or skills that you could learn and whatever in order to make a decision on something. But ultimately it comes down to you just saying, okay, but when is the time? When is the time? And I think that the sooner that you can make it the time, the better. And, and this is coming from, you know, a pretty world-class procrastinator <laughs> at, at certain certain times in my life. So, and and still in in many regards. So it's it's just learning to to recognize the the truth of our of our situation and and where are we lying to ourselves and. And yeah, just it's just getting honest with those things. Well, I appreciate your input on that because this week I've been feeling a little foggy. But you know, there's a certain kind of feeling of foggy and uh, there's actually clarity that comes from, you know, recognizing that you feel foggy, right? Because then all of a sudden you look for clarity. So uh, in some ways I'm probably more clear than I've been in a while, but I felt foggy and uh, I, I do like your take on it. I do think there's something about that, you know, before I share the beer, I'll just say this, is that sometimes you think, oh, if I do this, it'll, you know, it should be different or it'll answer this or whatever. And then you find out, you go and you do it and it doesn't answer the thing. And, you know, you, we sharing about having a child and just kind of how you're, you know, wherever you go, there you are, your same bullshit is still with you. You know, you didn't, you know, you didn't like run away from it or escape it or beat it or whatever. So I do think there's a certain amount of like right now, there's just kind of an awakening happening for me personally, where it's like, hey, you know, like for a while, it was great. You were doing your writing and you were writing for yourself and that made you happy. And you were, you know, that you were content with that. And then this last little bit, you've just suddenly realized, you know, you've come to the recognition that it's like, hey, I'm kind of done that now I feel like sharing some of these things that I've figured out and and you know whatever and it's like and you're not in the practice of it yet you're still in the practice of it served you writing for yourself and that was what you were doing and you know and and it's not like it's not like there's as much of a problem as I'm making it it's just like hey things have shifted and now it's time to kind of catch up to the shift and and uh and yeah and so you know, give myself, I think also like, like, I think you gotta be careful with this, but I do think there's a certain amount of give yourself a break. You know, you're in the practice of doing it a certain way and you're not in the practice of doing it this new way. So, um, you got a bunch of bullshit that's stopping you from, from taking that step. So recognize this bullshit and take the step and you're, you're good. I mean, it's like, don't make it so hard. You know, like I do feel like there's a certain amount of, we're just hard on ourselves. I know I am. <laughs> 
That's a, that's for sure. All right, you like this beer, don't you? I liked it. Yeah. Batch forty four. This is called Atomic Apricot, and guess what? It's a sour ale. Yeah. Not surprising to me in the least. Yeah. So I'm usually not into the sours. They're not usually my deal, but this one was good. It was like a just a little sour, not not overly, but it still I felt like it had a really good taste. It was sweet. Um, I've enjoyed it, and it's it's like a nice sunny day today. Today, like anything like peach apricot, you know, any of that type of stuff on a on a warm kind of sunny day. Oh man, it's just like and if they can find the right balance, I always find it's a good it's a good drink, you know. So anyway, I, uh, I'll let you share your thoughts. Yeah, no, I mean it's definitely was I was not expecting a sour, but it's it's good. It went down down easy and yeah, it's nice. We got the sun breaking out after some pretty dark and soupy soupy days here in October and uh and so it's it's uh, it went down went down real nice went down real nice for this one so well shall we final thoughts shall we do some final thoughts and close this off do you have All right. me or do you want me to share first? I mean I mean the microphone's pointed in my face so I'll <laughs> might as well I might as well I, I and I don't know if I really have anything more to say from my last my last stint here in, in of of on my soapbox but yeah like i'm really walking away with with yeah like that sense of remember it's just all bullshit surrounding that thing for the most part it's bullshit you know and and to get going don't don't make it a a huge mountain to climb like make make getting into that thing make it as easy on yourself as possible just as a practical sense of things and but i think the last thing i i want to just rehash for myself here in this conversation which yeah was the, was the most surprising part of this conversation because it gave me a new perspective and context on this whole you know that this idea of you know the delayed gratification or or putting away the immediate pleasure for the for the longer term gain and and stuff like that and and there was some some something just kind of clicked in a new way in my own being and brain here with that which is a thing of you know it's it's not simply about you know de- like delaying a short-term pleasure for a long-term pleasure it's it's actually because i think there is something immediate about that long-term pleasure as well you know that long-term gain because in that in that putting away that that immediate pleasure thing which is which is something in the context of this conversation that I understand is like, oh, this is some kind of a, this is actually some kind of a negative habit that is, that you're, that you are putting in front of the thing that's actually important, right? That's, that's help, that's keeping you, that's, a, that's helping you to avoid the thing that's really important. And that whole understanding that relationship better and that fear of the real thing you know and and that by choosing to do the big thing to, by choosing to do the the actually important thing i am actually in that moment that i make that decision that i am i am building i am or growing to use that term from earlier in the conversation I am growing that real, deep, honest relationship with myself and with my connection to life itself when I'm making that decision. And that's happening now. That's not a delayed thing, right? There is a long-term buildup that you're getting, but there's, there is an immediate thing that is happening still as well, right? It's maybe not that sort of... <laughs> orgasmic pleasure of 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 the moment necessarily but it's there's there's a 
there's a something else that's happening there in the moment as well, right? And and that's so much that's so much richer than that momentary grasping. So something that it's came, it came up several weeks ago and. I mean, I think you said that I said it initially, but it was avoidance strategies. And, um, but you kind of mentioned it and I was like, oh, it's, yeah, it's interesting. I I don't know if I, like, I feel like I got that term from something I learned through personal development, which was like, we have strategies for things. And I, I just think a lot of this conversation is about the bullshit of our avoidance strategies. And you know, it's um, it's interesting to look at this conversation and, and how we've evolved through it and go, yeah, like I have a bullshit about how I avoid and I avoid it. I think, you know, mostly it's, you know, if I was to say like, well, how do you tell the bullshit from from what's real is like, look at how it feels and, and, and just look at things that are uncomfortable and look at your strategies at avoiding the discomfort. And then go, well, is it uncomfortable but good to do? Would it be good for me to go towards it? And and if it would be good for you but it's uncomfortable, you need to look at how do I create some type of narrative or story or design to get me to avoid it. And, um, you know, something I think that I have recognized in this conversation for myself is that when something's new and I'm not good at it there is a tendency to be like i don't want to do that right now (laughs) that doesn't feel great you know i want to be good at what i do right i think it's i think it's a natural feeling i think most of us we don't like doing things we don't feel good at especially as you get older it's like when you're young you don't care you're just like this is new let's try it out let's see what happens but as you get older you be you get good at a lot of things you know if you keep working at stuff and then when you're not good at something it actually it, it feels more pronounced it's like, oh, I'm good at this, but I'm not good at that. I don't want to do the thing I'm not good at. Let me keep doing the thing I'm good at. And I think for me with writing, it's a little bit like that. There's a certain kind of writing that I'm good at and I'm comfortable with and I do it a lot. And then there's a certain type of writing I don't do a lot and I'm uncomfortable, like particularly like with novel writing and book writing. It's like I got some skills with it, but I have a lot to learn. I'm figuring some things out. You know, I, I've written books over the years that I've never published and I've noticed that also my communication style and my way of writing has has altered and changed and evolved and grown. And so there is something I had to figure out with screenwriting was finding my own voice as a writer, because there is a tendency to, as you learn screenwriting, I definitely fell, fell into this a little bit where you learn it and you begin to take on other people's voices, whether you know it or not. And then if you continue and carry on with it, you begin to discover that you've done this. And then you're trying to like extract your own voice from how you got sucked into kind of a, this is how you do it. This is the right way to do it. And you didn't even realize you were taking on someone else's voice. You just thought, oh, this is the strategy of how you write. And, you know, at least that was my experience of it. So I think, um, you know, going after what I'm trying to do here in my life, whatever it might be, let's just talk creativity, creatively in, in the realm of creativity, I would say that, yeah, if I push myself, it's going to be uncomfortable. So instead of making a story around avoiding discomfort, I'm going to go, okay, the story is bullshit. Let's just walk into this discomfort and remember that by doing this thing, I might not be good at it. I might mess it up. It might be a bunch of errors and, and, and crappy in the beginning or whatever. But like what I'm trying to do is figure out how to do this thing and communicate in a way that feels good. And you know what? It might take me a while. And let's just, let's just, every time I want to avoid that feeling, let's just go towards that feeling and let's just do it. And, and like you said, let's do it for five minutes. Let's sit in that feeling for five minutes. Eventually, I'm going to get comfortable with that feeling. Eventually, that feeling is not going to be that big of a deal. And if I keep doing it, eventually, I'm going to get good. It's just it's just the nature of how it works. 
I know that. I know a lot of things are like that. So, um, yeah, this has been an interesting conversation for me, uh, Evan, because I feel like uh, I'm grateful you you had a certain clarity for me that you brought to it, which gave me a certain, uh, it, it helped me get out of a fog a little bit. I do feel like I came in this week a little bit foggy. I've been feeling foggy, but you've helped me come to a point of clarity. So that's been really great. And I hope that our audience maybe found some clarity too, you know course this is all a work in progress i don't know if we've come up to any final complete answers on this topic i'm sure it'll come up again as this is the nature of the beast you know when it comes to creativity but you know for those of you out there who are like myself sometimes maybe prioritizing things that are not as important let's let's flip the script together guys let's do it (laughs) Thank you for listening in on our conversation today. We hope you found something helpful that you can carry forward with you. Head over to our website, wayoftheartist.com, for more free exclusive material and learn about the show. If you haven't already, please support us by subscribing to the show, sharing it with people you know, and keeping compassionate, creative conversation going.